a little bit. I never thought I would be up here. And a little bit about myself. Um, I've been here at Victory Outreach a little over two years since we were at the school. And um, I came a little hesitantly. Um, it was a little um, discussing and convincing from my husband who brought me to Victory Outreach. Thank you, honey. Um, but, you know, I fought myself about coming here because it was something unknown. But I am, since I've been here, I've seen the growth of this church, but not just the church, the growth within me. And um, one of the things that I learned, especially this was my first Victory um, Outreach Conference, I have been to um, several retreats and conferences before at my other church, but nothing as energetic as this. <laughs> um, it was definitely... Um, it was definitely experience, but um, I feel like the same message was repeated over and over again. Uh, there was messages of passing the baton, stepping up, um, the being on fire for God. And, you know, I, I asked, when I was asked uh, to come in and share a word or share something with you, um, I just felt that God was having me reflect on my past and um, God has brought me through a lot um, as a single parent. Um, I got saved in sixth grade. My whole family did. We were going through a lot. There was a lot of chaos at home. And I served at one time. But then, you know, life came and I did my own thing, was distracted by things of the world, and I stopped serving and when I was asked to speak tonight, I just asked God to just show me. And I was just having reflections of all the blessings and everything he's done for me. And um, before I, I go on to my message, um, if we could just bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you, Father God, for this time. I pray that you empty me of myself, Father God, and that you just speak through me, Father God, that I will be your vessel, Father God. And I just thank you once again for my church and for my family here in Jesus' name. Amen. So the title I put on this is Step Up. And my scripture is Isaiah 61.1. And it says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim the captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. See, during that convention, I just felt a conviction while I was sitting there hearing all these messages because... Like I said, I was I remembered um, serving at one time, and I just felt like God was just telling me, like, when are you gonna, when are you gonna step up? When are you gonna share my word? I don't have to be up here in the pulpit. I don't have to be evangelizing on the street. I can share my life story. I can share what I've been through to somebody else. I can uplift them, and I feel like sometimes we forget that that that's that's. Um, that it, it's, it's a responsibility that I feel that God has put in my heart. And um, maybe you're like me and maybe you feel a little intimidated like being up here. Um, but that's, 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 uh, um, that's a study. That's a, sorry, service. Um, you can share your story. You can uplift somebody and maybe just be present, just like, like our sister said, you know, just being aware of your surroundings. Sometimes you can see somebody's hurt while just looking in their eyes or they don't have a smile or just ask, you know, ask them if you could pray for them. I've noticed that I feel that I have stepped out um, a little bit more out of my comfort zone. And um, I just wanted to keep, leave this idea um, there's a quote that came to my mind that I remembered. It says, a, deep, a drop creates a puddle, a puddle to a stream, a stream to a river, which leads to the ocean. We could be that drop in this world. We can share a word, a, share, a word of encouragement, a word of God's love and what he's done for our life. And I just want to thank you for this. And um, thank you. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> Hi, church. Oh, man, I'm so excited to be up here. Woo! 
God has brought me a long way. God is so patient. I just have to say that he's so patient with us. And God never rushed me. He just dealt with me in my process. And I'm just so excited. This is a privilege. This is such an honor for me. And I, I don't take this lightly. It's like my heart is so full just to be up here to, you know, for God to call me to come up here. It just means so much. But I, I want to thank uh, Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruthie for this opportunity. I also, of course, I thank God for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. And um, let's go ahead and pray in. Amen. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, God. Thank you for bringing me here today, God. I just ask that you use me, Lord, as your mouthpiece, God. Lord, I just ask that you, you speak this word clearly today, God. I move myself aside, and I, I let you use me, Lord, as your willing vessel, God. I thank you, and I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Woo, so today I titled my message, How Fresh Is Your Yes? <laughs> And I, when I heard this at the women's convention, I was like, whoa, I got so excited because I was like, yeah, like, my yes has been fresh lately. Like, what I was doing last season, is, it didn't, it's not going to work with this new season we're in. We're in acceleration mode. We're in mega mode. Like, the old yes is gone. It's a new yes that we need a new fire. Okay, I, so I have a, a scripture that I want to read. It's Psalm 32.8, and I'm just going to read this for the sake of time. And it says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. So I was, like, reading, and I'm like, God, just give me a scripture, something to read, right? And, and, and when he was giving me this, it gave me peace because I know that he's instructing me. I know that he's guiding me through this, like, it's not, it's not on me. God is, like, touching my heart, getting a hold of my heart, and he's, he's showing me, go this way, go that way. Like, I feel the stretch. I feel the tug. And it doesn't always feel good. I, it's not supposed to feel good. Growth, it's, it's going to hurt. It's, that's just how it is, you know. We're stretching. It hurts. <laughs> but just have peace and know that he's with us. He's with us at, during this growth, during this season. So... Let me see. Oh, this is a good one. He told me, he's like, look, we're not, called, we're not called to play it small. We can't be playing it small here. We need bigger mentalities. The old is gone, and we're here in the new. And it's time. It's time for us to go all the way in, church. We're not going in halfway. It's all the way. We can't, we can't mess with God. It's time to stop playing games. Let's go. Let's get to work. You know what I mean? It doesn't feel good, but that's okay. I, you know, when, when they asked me, hey, oh, we're going to put Sonia up here, I was like, woo, okay, amen. <laughs> I was like, woo. I was like, oh, I'm going to go up there. I'm going to go up there scared if I have to, but I'm going to go because God said, if he says, we got to go. And you know what? Also, one of my favorite scriptures is, is God did not give us a a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Always remember that anytime you're feeling that, that fear or like, you know, like that opposition. It's like, oh, God didn't give me a spirit of fear, but his power, his power, not my power. <laughs> I have another scripture. It says, it's in Isaiah 43, 19. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it. And I just got to say, church, we're all a part of this third wave. All of us play a big, important role. It's, I know, like, the youth, it's like we're the face. But, you know, you, everybody else, all, like, the, the vets, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, but seriously, all you guys, you guys play an important role. You guys are, we need discipling. We need somebody to show us how to intercede, somebody to show us how to pray. We, we watch. There's people watching us, you know, like, like I'm, I'm watching. I'm a very observant person, and I, I keep my eye, and I'm like, oh, I like that. I like how she prays. I like how she preaches, you know, and I want to catch those things. It's so important. At this uh, convention, I'm not sure exactly what sister said it, but she said, God won't move our feet until he moves our heart. I was like, whoo. Just all this conviction. 
<laughs> but it's a good thing. Conviction is a good thing. And then another one. This last night, Sister Mitzi. Sister Mitzi, she just went off. She doesn't play. <laughs> but she was saying, you know, it's time for us to trade in our lamps for torches. Yeah. And you know why? Because with the little lamp, when the wind comes, it's going to blow. It's going to turn off that, that light, right? But with the torch, there's a burning fire. And, and like us just being united together when our fire is burning, you know, I need a little bit of your fire. Like catch somebody's fire. Identify who's on fire and go to them. God told me another one, and this one, I was like, ooh, God, are you sure? Are you sure you want me to say this? Over here questioning God. Who am I, right, to question God? But he said, don't be disobedient, don't delay, and don't be doubtful. Yes, one more time. Don't be disobedient, don't delay, and don't be doubtful. God has called all of us, and we, it's time to get in alignment with this with this vision. It's time, church. We're running out of time here. And I've never felt more ready to be here. I know that I went through my little process. God was pruning me and, you know, but I'm just, I'm here and I'm, I'm his willing vessel. I know God's going to start raising up a lot of people and you got to be ready. Be ready because, it's, you know, he, you're going to feel the, the tug. You're going to feel it in your heart and just know that that's from God. Know that it's from him. And he wants to do something in you. He doesn't want to see you stay small, stay stagnant. He wants to see you grow. He wants to see you in your fullest potential. Okay. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just have to say that this convention, it was one of my first times going. And I, I couldn't believe that I've never been to a women's convention. I go to everything but a women's convention. And I was like, I don't know what to expect. Like, but when I got there, these women just go off. They're, they're crazy. Like, I was like, oh, my, okay, okay, Lord. But it, but it encouraged me, it encourages me because I know that God's going to raise up people in our church like that one day to be in world conferences, conventions. You got to believe that. That's inside of you. Take that. Grab it. <laughs> and... Uh, so I want to leave you with one more scripture. I know I have so many scriptures, <laughs> but it's from, it's in Isaiah 41.10, and it says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. So I just want to take this time to, to thank all of the women, all the women who have been just like pushing through and, like, showing up and, you know, just doing everything that God wants us to do. Even with our women's, our discipleships, you know, those little sacrifices, it just pays off. Like, we, we're seeing the growth in our women, and, and Sister Ruthie, she's really just, like, getting, it, getting a hold of our women. So this time, just, I just want to pray out. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this word, God. Thank you, Lord, for the boldness that you give inside me, Lord. Thank you for cracking this outer shell, God. I just ask that you continue to be with the rest of us in this service, Lord. And for everybody else that speaks here tonight, God, that you just be with them, Lord. I thank you and I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> um, amen, everyone. I'm just, I'm blessed to be here. I have to say that this is a privilege to be here. Um, yes, when i uh, when Ruthie told me um, that they had um, picked me, I was like, wow, me, really? I, I don't feel worthy. So um, this is just like, it's, um, it's awesome that I'm able to share just a little piece of my heart. So um, I just want to open up in a word of prayer. Everyone just please um, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, God, and I ask you, God, to move me to the side, God, forgive me of all my sins, God, wash me and cleanse me with your blood that I may be a pure vessel, God, that you may use me as your mouthpiece tonight, bless, um, bless the service, God, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, um, tonight I just, I want to talk to you about, um, well, first I titled my message, The Fire Within. 
because the fire is within me and I believe it is within all of you tonight because you, it's not a coincidence that you are here. The Bible says that many are called but few are chosen. So congratulations, you have made it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Um, a few things that I want to just point out, um, a few pointers and um, highlights that I uh, wrote down for um, while I was there at the convention is it's fruit season. There's new wine. The harvest time is here. Align yourself. Divine acceleration. Speeding through the process. Greater momentum. Unstoppable force. Unity. And timing is everything. And I believe that timing is everything. Um, when it's... Um, when you, when you want something, you know, when you used to go to your parents and ask for something, the timing was everything. You had to wait, wait until you seen uh, your dad or mom was in a good mood and then you knew it was time to ask. Amen? I know that's how I did. <laughs> that's how I would do it. And I believe that... Um, that timing is everything, and, and when you ask God for something, the timing is always right. It's always right to ask God for anything because he's a good God, and he's willing to give us everything, but we got to give it to him too. It's not, it's, it's not just all about God, and I believe in God. Yes, we believe in God, but we also have to do the work to get what we need. Amen? Um, and tonight, I just would like to, um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard about the parable, and I kind of want to just bounce off of uh, Sister Mitzi's message, um, like Sonia was talking about, um, turning your lamp into a torch. Amen. So how many of us have heard of that parable about the ten virgins? Amen. Yes, I said it. I know I didn't want to say that word up here on the pulpit, but um, it's biblical and it's in the Bible. And um, it's a parable about um, there was ten virgins, there was five wise virgins. I'm actually just looking for the parable real quick. And um, I forgot my passcode. And I apologize. Well, I don't want to do it too many times because then I'm going to get locked out. Okay, I'm there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so I would like to read it. It's in, um, it's in Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, and it reads like this. At the time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. Knowing, I just want to stop right there, just knowing that they were about to meet their bridegrooms, their future husbands, they went out without any oil. Who, that's just how some of us, we need to be prepared at all times. People, we need to be prepared whenever God has something for us. We need to make sure that our lamps are, and, and our, um, our, our canisters are filled with oil. We have to have the reserve tank so when we are on empty, we have a reserve tank. We have backup. We have something to, to hold on to. Amen? And so it says that the wise ones, however, took oils in jars along with their lamps. So the bridegroom was a long time in coming, and all, all of them became drowsy and fell asleep. While at midnight a cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the ten virgins woke up and took their lamps, and the foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. And they replied, no. There may not be enough oil for both of us. Instead, go to those who sell the oil and buy some for yourselves. So they didn't want to give up their oil but they, because they came prepared. And the other ten, five virgins, they should have came prepared too. They knew what it was. They, 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 they lost an opportunity to possibly meet their future husband. They had an opportunity to go with light so they can see, oh, I, I, I want that one. Oh, I don't want that one. Or I don't want this one. They had an opportunity to, to meet their future husbands and didn't come prepared. And I feel that's how we are sometimes. God gives us an opportunity and we don't go prepared. 
we come with our with just with a lamp with no oil with no way to see the light and how many of us know that we need to be able to see where we are going we need to be able to light up the room to see that's why there's light i remember being um being a little kid and there was this tree that used to come and with the winds would blow and we there was windy days in almani back in the 80s it's not like that anymore but um it, there used to be this tree that used to come and the branches would hit my window and I was so scared and I remember telling my mom tell the neighbors to cut that tree mom because I'm scared but in the night in in the nighttime I was scared but in the daytime when there was light I had a sense of peace and I feel that's how we are when we are in the darkness we are scared but when we have light and we are able to see the way we feel safe that's how God is for us. He's our safe place. He's our comfort zone. And um, I just also wanted to say that not to forget your fuel or your oil and, um, and also to make sure that, that you always have the light on. When, when you go to the store, when you're at home, don't be in a dark place because that's how I was. That's how I grew up. My house was dark. But I want to just tell you that when you're home and you notice you're feeling like that, open up the windows, let the light in, put some worship music on, get yourself going because you're the one who has to do it. No one is going to do it for you. God's going to do it for you, but no one else, no human here on earth will be able to do it for you. You have to be able to do it for yourself. Amen. Because if you're, if you do it for yourself, you're going to be able to do it for someone else and you're going to be able to show that person the light their future you're going to be able to say come with me walk with me I'm walking right come with me I know where the light is I know where to go I'll hold the torch for you sister I'll hold the torch for you brother I'll lead your way amen and with God's help of course with God's help only not not with our help because sometimes uh, we can go astray Amen. And, um, and that's when we're in the darkness. But when you're living in the light, you won't go astray because your path will be clear. But don't drop the lamp where you cause your, a fire and, you, and, and the smoke is clouding your own uh, vision. Where you yourself is the one who is blinding your, your, your path and your, your sight because of the smoke that you've caused dropping your lantern on the floor. Amen. We got to be the ones who walk clear. We don't want to drop our lantern where it just blows up and sets the place on fire and clouds your vision. Amen. We want to be able to see the light clear. That's why it says hold your torch up in the air so nothing can get in its way. Amen. Well, um, also, just, um, <laughs> I, I, I also just wanted to say before I started um, speaking, I wanted to say thank you to my brother Ez. Uh, for um, for being true to the call, and for Ruthie for always standing by his side and uh, and never giving up on him and on me, and um, it's great to see my sister Lisa here. I love you, get there, and also for my son Clammy, who I believe prayed me in. <laughs> Because um, I put Clemmy through a lot, and I didn't want to talk about that. But I feel that I, that I have a, a need, and I just want to let you guys know that if I can change, if God can change somebody like me, he can definitely do it for you. Because I was the worst of the worst, and God has brought me out of darkness, and he yes, showed me yes, the light. Yes. Amen. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And let me just pray out real quick. Pray, yes, pray out. Let me pray out as we close this session. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity, yes, for everything Jesus. you're doing in our lives. God, continue, God, to show us the light. Continue, God, to help us help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I hope this message blessed you and ministered into your heart. I also want to let you know that it's never too late for you to give. If you look at the links below, there you can see different ways for you to give unto the Lord. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and do so right now, where there you can see previous messages and future services. Other than that, get connected and stay connected. We'll see you real soon. God bless.